in this tutorial we're going to talk about combustion analysis so combustion analysis involves burning a compound of a known formula but we know the elements that make up that compound for example you can be told that the compound contains carbon hydrogen and oxygen but you don't know the ratio in which they are so we are going to give you the mass of the carbon dioxide produced and the mass of water that is produced so you know the molar mass of carbon then you also know the relative molecular mass of carbon dioxide so that becomes the ratio multiplied by the given mass of carbon dioxide you will be able to find the mass of carbon in the carbon dioxide produced you do the same for water you find the ratio of the hydrogen in the water molecule then multiply by the given mass of water then you find the mass of the hydrogen in the water molecule so for oxygen it's in excess so we don't do that so what you're going to do is we'll add the mass of the carbon and the mass of the hydrogen then subtract from the given mass of what the compound that was reacting so we have a question there to guide us a 2 gram sample of a compound gave 4.86 gram carbon dioxide and 2.03 grams water upon combustion in oxygen find this empirical formula if it only contained carbon hydrogen and oxygen okay so from the question we are told that the compound of the sample is made up of what it contains carbon hydrogen and what and oxygen so that's what we have in the sample so we have carbon we have hydrogen and oxygen of course we know this is being bent or not in oxygen to give us eh? carbon dioxide and the water as shown from the equation there okay so we say that first to find the mass of carbon we have to find the ratio of carbon in the carbon dioxide using the molar masses so we know that approximately the mass the molar mass of carbon if you check your predict table is going to be 12 point something so we just use 12 for the sake of an example okay so you have 12 divided by the molar mass of carbon dioxide meaning that you add the molar masses of all the elements making up carbon dioxide which in this case is carbon itself so we have carbon which is one then we have got two oxygen molecules that make up carbon which are approximately 16 of molar mass so that is the ratio then this is supposed to be multiplied by the mass of the carbon dioxide that was produced so 4.86 so approximately we have 12 over 44 multiplied by 4.86 so if you get your calculator there you're going to have 1.325 so you have 1.325 grams of what of carbon okay So after finding for carbon, we have to move to hydrogen. So let me just indicate the mass there. So we have a mass. So it's 1.325 grams. For, hyd for hydrogen as well, we have got two hydrogen molecules. So it's going to be two hydrogen molecules. Their molar mass is approximately 1.008 divided by the total. So I've got two hydrogen molecules in the water molecule, so it will be 2 times 1.008. Then we have one oxygen molecule, so it's a plus 16. So that is the ratio of the hydrogen in water multiplied by the given mass, which was 2.03 according to the equation. Okay. So that is the mass of the water molecule. So after doing your divisions, uh, you find that your answer is going to be 0 0.225 grams of what? Of hydrogen. So we have the mass of hydrogen there. So for oxygen, we are not going to use any of the two because oxygen was in excess okay you bend the all compound in oxygen so as determining the mass of oxygen using the given products will be deceiving because part of the oxygen wasn't part of the compound so it's better we had the given masses what we've calculated 
then you subtract from the mass of the sample. Okay. So we've been told that this sample only add carbon, hydrogen, and what? And oxygen. And the total mass is 2 grams. Okay. So you know the total mass there. So we know the mass of carbon is 1.325. So say 1.325 plus 0 0.225 of the hydrogen. So if you add these masses, you are going to have what? You are going to have 1.55. So you have 1.5506. So where the oxygen I put x is equal to 2. So first to find the value of x, we're supposed to subtract what is on the left, on the right hand side. So it will be what you have there minus from 2. So our x is actually going to be equal to 0 0.449. So we have 0 0.449. So that's the mass of what? That's the mass of the oxygen. So we've now found the masses of all the elements that are making up the sample of a known formula. Let's now try to determine their, their number of moles by dividing by what? By their molar masses. Of course, we know that the number of moles is given by mass over what? Molar mass. So we have the masses. So we're supposed to divide by the various molar masses of each element. So for carbon, it's approximately 12. Hydrogen approximately 1.008. Then for oxygen, it's see, approximately 15.998. So we just say 16. So after dividing 1.325 divided by 12, you have zero point. I run the answers to four significant figures. So we have zero point one one zero four. Then for hydrogen, you have zero point two two five divided by 1.008 approximately 0 0.2232 that's already for significant figures then 0 0.44 so that was supposed to be 9 that's 0 0.449 divided by 16 you have 0 0.0 2806. So that is our smallest number. So after determining the number of moles, we are now supposed to divide by the smallest. Okay? So I won't show that. So we are able to see that the smallest one is one for oxygen. So if you divide that into itself, what is it going to give you? It's going to give you a one. So get the same figure again, divide it into the, the number of moles of hydrogen which is 0 0.02232 divided by 0 0.02806.25 if your answer is 7.95 so which is approximately 8 then for carbon you have 1.325 divided by you have got 0 0.1104 divided by 0 0.02806 3.934 so approximately 4 so in case you got lost what we are doing is we've determined the number of moles for all these elements then the smallest one is one for oxygen so we are dividing by the smallest after dividing into itself it gave us a 1 for hydrogen it has given us 8 after dividing this same number of moles then into the ones for carbon it has given us 4 so therefore, for us to come up with our formula, what are we supposed to do? It is C four H eight and over. So that is our empirical formula. It has given us the ratio of these elements in that compound. So this is all about conventional analysis. Thank you very much for watching.